And without further ado, coming to our speaker for the day, Dr. Neeta Mehta. She's an autism interventionist and remedial educator, also the director of Sahas Physiotherapy and Wellness Center. Her mission is to create an inclusive society for children with special needs. She's a pediatric physiotherapist and also a handwriting without tears expert with a rich experience of 18 plus years. And now you will understand why she's the perfect speaker for today's topic, 18 plus years of experience on handwriting without tears. That's truly amazing, Dr. Nita. And without further ado, I would request you to please take over and guide our audience. Dr. Nita, you're on mute. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Swati, for the kind introduction and thank you, Ability Team, once more for the opportunity. Good evening to all the participants and a very warm welcome. So let's get into the topic directly. I'll be sharing my screen. Uh, is my screen visible, Ms. Swati? Yes, it is, Dr. Nita. So today um, we are discussing why handwriting is important for learning and memory and why this topic is important. So let me uh, give you a little background about uh, the Handwriting Without Fears uh, program and also how I have got uh, into that interest of handwriting training. So as a pediatric physiotherapist and as an autism interventionist, I have come across many children uh, between the age group of four years to 14 years who come to me uh, with specific handwriting difficulties. It may be different for everyone. It may be someone who has difficulty staying within the space, someone has difficulty with eye-hand coordination, etc. But definitely the difficulty is there. And uh, while we were working with the children, we were thinking, is it necessary for us to, you know, continue to do handwriting training with them or, you know, switch over to a more easier medium, which they would understand, like, for example, typing, would that be helpful? Is handwriting worth uh, a skill pursuing if there are challenges? So then we set out on finding out that how handwriting is important and how it is important for learning and memory and therefore a skill worth pursuing. So let me take you through the slides. So the first one, handwriting involves motor movement. So let's think for a moment. What do we do when we write? When we write, we are in a process of movement. We are moving our hand from one, one space to another space, from one area to another area. At the same time, we are moving our eyes along with our hand. Also, we are moving, we are not moving our body, but we are um, posturing our body in a certain way such that the handwriting movement takes place appropriately. So one is definitely that it is stimulating our motor brain, our frontal cortex. Then let's go to handwriting involves the sensory brain. When I say handwriting involves the sensory brain, what are the things that come uh, during the sensory time? So uh, handwriting requires pressure. Handwriting requires movement. Handwriting is also associated with sound uh, while you write on the paper. So uh, it is a multi-sensorial activity and it activates the parietal lobe. The uh, sensory area is in the parietal lobe of our brain. So again, we see that it, a second lobe in the brain is getting activated. Handwriting involves the visual brain. So these visual areas which are in the temporal cortex, which is again one of the uh, part of the brain and the occipital lobe is responsible for identification of letters, identification of the written word, encoding of new memory. The hippocampus, which is our memory center is located in the temporal lobe. So it involves uh, the, the brain uh, for vision as well as for memory. So handwriting also activates the temporal lobes, which is very important. Our speech area is also located, speech area, the, the area which actually makes sense of the written word and the language is located in the temporal lobe. Again, that, that center gets activated while we are in the process of writing. Handwriting stimulates motor planning. 
whenever we want to write do we immediately start writing for example if you are uh, learning to write for the first time we are actually first identifying the letter for example and then we are planning on how we are going to move our hands to write this letter on the paper on a particular space so before the actual task there is first an ideation and then the planning of the movement and then the actual movement taking place so handwriting stimulates motor planning i love this this is my favorite part handwriting activates the ras ras is a reticular activating system which is responsible for focus so when you are writing something down with a pen let me read this out for you when you are writing something down with a pen and paper or with a pen on paper you are stimulating a collection of cells in the base of your brain known as a reticular activating system or the ras the ras is a filter for all the information you needs to your brain needs to process it gives more attention to what you are currently focusing on so there may be many things that uh, that may be occupying your mind or that that may be occupying your uh, space for uh, for a particular moment but when you are writing you need to be focused on that task and the other tasks become secondary the the task of writing becomes primary It's because the ras filters out the uh, irrelevant information and concentrates on the relevant so again ras is uh, something that is stimulated during hand writing from the above we can easily say when writing by hand you are not only activating the motor cortex to make your hand physically write but also motor planning aspects of the visual cortex to visualize the letters in your mind language networks in the central and the temporal lobes to actually communicate and networks associated with reading and spelling what does this tell me that when i am in the process of writing i am actually activating so many areas of my brain and in almost the end, it is a whole brain activity so it is activating your frontal uh, cortex it, the, the frontal uh, lobe cortex it is activating the parietal lobe it is activating the temporal lobe the occipital lobe it is also activating the cerebr areas in the cerebellum which is at the base of the brain and the reticular activating system so that is one major point and a positive towards a skill worth pursuing when it is activating so many areas and this is a representation this is a neuronal activation that takes place during handwriting and it it is not necessary uh, in terms of english handwriting it is in terms of any script that you write the areas that are activated are many fold one when you are learning to write it is your uh, prefrontal cortex which is required for planning that that is more in the picture but once you have known the letters once you know that how how the letter is written and it, it then it becomes a subconscious effort so then it becomes also an automatic process when i said handwriting is a multi sensory activity what do i mean it requires pressure because when you hold your pencil in your hand the amount of pressure that needs to be given by your thumb and your finger over the pencil the amount of pressure that needs to be given by the pencil on the paper the movement that occurs again which is coming from the movement systems of your body visual sensory system is activated and when you write the sound of the pencil on the paper or the pen on the paper is also a sensory activation therefore handwriting is a multi sensory activity and it is known that whenever we are involved in multi sensorial activity the attention span the arousal it is maximum and even exercises that are chosen to alert the brain are multi sensory in nature components that are critical to handwriting so for handwriting we require sequencing it is important because when we set out to write we are actually sequencing step by step what is it that we want to write for example it, if it is a word like apple 
So I want to write A, then I want to write P, then I want to write P, then I want to write L, then I want to write E. So I'm sequencing letter by letter. If I want to form a letter which I have just learned, for example, letter A, I'm sequencing the diagonal line that comes first, the second diagonal line, and then the sweeping line. Then I, when I talk about the bimanual task, when we are writing, if, if we are right dominant, for example, when we are writing with our right hand, it is not that our left hand stays free. Our left hand is actually on the paper, supporting the paper while you are writing with your right hand. So it is a bimanual task. Both hands are working at the same time, though the, the hand that is not holding the pencil uh, is a supportive hand, but yet it is a working hand. I am talking about bilateral coordination now. So when you actually write, you require coordination skills. You require coordination between the muscles of your shoulder, your elbow, your wrist, and your finger joints. You require them to work appropriately. We cannot work with our elbow elevated and then writing. It, it may You may be able to write, but the, the presentation would be totally different and maybe not legible. So coordination of different parts of the body to write plus coordination of the right hand side and the left hand side of the body to write. When we write, we usually go towards the table, support our elbows, support the pencil in our hand, support the other hand on the paper. And when we write, there is a certain posture that we assume we rotate towards the paper. So our right and the left side of the brains are coordinating to bring about these skills. Also very, very important is we require good fine motor skills for holding the pencil, for putting the appropriate pressure and for writing well and legibly. Also, it is important that our proximal muscle strength, which is our shoulder strength, should be enough for us to not get tired because it is supporting our hand in writing. Whenever proximal muscle strength is weak, we end up getting tired after a few minutes of writing, even though the pencil is held properly. From the above, we can easily say, so uh, before I move further, I would like to also quote that when we were discussing whether handwriting is worth a skill pursuing, we said, let's go, let's go to the public and find out. So we had conducted a survey and we had uh, received are about more than 155 replies, 122 people had chosen handwriting as um, a skill that they would choose to continue to do because, and they, they had different reasons, the connections just had to be made. So uh, they said that handwriting was comfortable to them. Handwriting was, uh, because it was a process they had learned already, it was easier for them to uh, go by. So. So it was ingrained in their memory. It was encoded in their memory. So it was easier for them to pursue. Also, when, when they were writing, they were also thinking at the same time on how to plan and what word to write and what would be the correct way to write it. So they were also tapping into the processes they had used for learning. So it was also creating new pathways, uh, which were activating the learning, learning path. Also, they said that it was very personal in nature. The script that they were writing it was personal to them. My writing and your writing is going to be personal, uh, personal, right? Like my writing cannot be compared to your handwriting. Your handwriting cannot be compared to a third person's handwriting. It is a personal writing skill and a personal script that actually comes into the picture. So it is creative in nature. And you can actually play with the letters the way you want and you see you see it in also in the form of calligraphy that how people play with letters uh, as a art form it also uh, involves it also lights up the areas whenever we are writing and when we are actually specifically uh, writing creative language uh, or when we are writing a story the area of critical thinking lights up because you have to think on what should come first what should come second what should come third and you bring that whole process together and then put it down on paper. 
I already explained to you how coordination is involved because cerebellum is involved. Cerebellum is our coordination center as well as a center for procedural memory on how things should take place. It, it remembers procedure, procedure by procedure. And handwriting also helps in concentration as we saw through the reticular activating system. How it filters off the irrelevant information and helps you concentrate on the task at hand. Also, you're using both hand movements. Sequential hand movements activate large regions of the brain responsible for thinking, language, working memory and healing. When a reticular activating system is activated, what it actually does is when you're filtering out the irrelevant information, focusing on the relevant, you're being in the now. Being in the now is also a part of the healing process and mindfulness. Here comes the main thing uh, which we want to speak about is challenges which are faced by special needs children. Now, usually if, uh, I, if you are able to make out this sam sample, in this sample, if you observe the spacing, first the formation of letters. Now, for example, this is an E that has been written it has been written in between the four lines. The formation of the small letter E, it is big in size. Also, it is not very well formed. The spatial relation means where should the letter be in space? It should actually be on the single line or between the two lines, but it is between the four lines. If you see the position in space, it is not even touching the bottom line. It is hanging. Even the letter after E is hanging above E. If you can make out this. The pressure gradient, if you see, is light. Therefore, it is not very readable or re legible. The visual perception for this child is definitely affected because spatial relation is a part of visual perception. Figure ground, which is like, you know, when you have to write many words on a paper you have to make out where you want to write it and appropriately so figure ground is also affected position in space that is how do i put my letters one after the other this is all a part of visual perception and eye hand coordination how the child has written how the child has moved the hand along with the eye would become important over here the grip strength looks poor from i am thinking from the perspective of the pressure gradient. It is very light, so the amount of strength that the child has put to write this has, has been low. These are some other samples. So when we look at these samples, the main thing that comes to me, first of all, it is a blank paper. There is no boundary that is given to the child on which the child can write upon. So the child has chosen to write in a manner but it has not come in a proper position. So position in space is affected. Spatial relation is affected. Also, if you see the position of the letters from the margin, it is moving away and it is creating a slope. So where do I start from? Is something that the child needs to be trained in. When you see the pressure gradient, there are times when the pressure is very high, that is dark, and there are times then it is getting lighter. Again, it is getting darker. Again, it is getting lighter in the following sample. This is a sample where, uh, where a child who is at the level of kindergarten is being taught to write cursive C, which is not one of the developmental skills that has to be there at that age. But anyways, here we see uh, in this sample, if you see this sample, so September 9th and October 10th, the child has to copy exactly the same way. But what is happening is the size of the letters are big. The pressure gradient is dark and the, let, the numbers and some letters are moving out of the space. After practice, after training, the child was then asked to write within the double lines. After practice, we saw this change after training where the child was now able to write within the double line, stay within the double line. Formations were slightly still affected. 
uh, I just move this. Uh, yes. Also, if you see the single line attempt for the child, where he has to copy alligator and lizard, it has improved from what he had started in the initial double line alignment and now he has come to the single line alignment. The pressure gradient has improved. The formations are yet to improve completely. Now, this is a child who was supposed to write in the red and blue line book. The amount of time that she took to write this was quite a bit. Second is, if you see the spacing, there is, and then there is a lot of spacing. Uh, there is a time for everything. And then the same child has written in a double lined, uh, double lined book or a double lined paper with the boundary that has been marked for her. And you can see a change. Uh, so when you mark a boundary, you're actually giving a position for each word. So the child actually got, was helped by giving that boundary uh, on the uh, baseline. So these were some of the samples. Now, what are the grip issues that one can face? We saw the challenges uh, in terms of sensory issues, in terms of spatial relation, position in space, figure ground, eye-hand coordination, pressure gradient. When we talk about grip issues, so many times uh, the children, usually when, when the child is learning to form a grip, at the age of two to three, it is just a mass grasp. And by the age when they reach four years, that is the time they get a dynamic tripod grasp. Before that, they may also get a quadruped grasp. So I will stop share and I'll show you the different types of grasp and then continue. Okay, so if my screen is visible, this is the dynamic tripod grasp where the thumb and the pointer finger are on the pencil and they are being supported by the tall finger. Okay, Th these two fingers can bend. So this is the dynamic and you're writing where your fine motor muscles of the finger have to work in a dynamic tripod grasp. Okay, then there is a quadruped grasp. Is my screen visible, Miss... Uh, Swati? Yes, Dr. Nita, it is clearly visible. Thank you. The dynamic quadruped grasp will make use of four fingers. Will make use of four fingers. So many children write uh, using four fingers and they move forward. The little finger actually rests in the space and they use four fingers. This is called the quadruped grasp. The tripod grasp, static tripod grasp is similar, but they, it will use more of wrist muscles. Uh, instead of the finger finger muscles of the joint while writing there is always a there is a developmental part uh, on which how the grip develops so uh, we should know that what is the age of the child and what is the relevant uh, grip for that child during that age uh, i will share screen once more So, uh, going through different kind of grass, I have done it uh, in a manner that I have just explained you how it moves forward. Not in detail though. But what can be the issues with the grasp or the grip? Is that even if the child is holding the pencil well, and if the child is getting tired while writing or is not showing interest while writing, one of the things one must check is the proximal strength. That is the shoulder strength of the child and shoulder and the core strength. Because when shoulder and core strength are poor, they do not support the posture well enough for the child to be seated in a good posture and then write appropriately for a longer time. Then it brings about tiredness. The child may keep switching hands to write or the child may give up writing for some time or want frequent breaks. If there are any bony or ligament issues, which, is, uh, which may be congenital, 
or which may be developed because of injury, then definitely uh, that may be requiring some kind of adaptive equipment. So when I talk about adaptive equipment is for a child who has, who, who has a thumb, which is hyperextended, means which stays away from the pencil. So if you give him a thinner pencil, you give him a thinner pencil and the thumb stays away, then I need to change my device. So I would move to a thicker pencil. So even though the thumb goes into hyperextension, this is a thick pencil. Even if the thumb goes into hyperextension, then also there is enough space. It will, it will not go into that much of hyperextension versus which, which it will go with a thinner pencil. A more thicker pencil also is this. The circumference is much bigger and when you hold this, the chances of the thumb going into a hyperextension movement become less. So those kind of adaptations and they have to be customized to each child after going through the assessment of handwriting for that child. If the child has small joints, again, it is a physical issue. Ideational or motor apraxia. So this I have taken in grip issue. Why? Because many times teachers complain that or parents complain that sometimes they are writing with left hand, sometimes they are writing with right hand. Mostly the dominance of the hand is comes into the picture by three and a half, four years. It gets established. So even after that age, if the shifting is happening, one needs to check the proximal strength that is the shoulder and the core strength. Or one may check whether the child is not getting the idea of how am I supposed to write this? I know the word or I can maybe comprehend the word, but I'm not able to plan how to write it. So I keep switching my hands. Sometimes the comprehension or the idea may itself be missing and therefore also the switch of hands may occur. How to hold the pencil, that idea also may not be there. So that is a part of apraxia. Okay, so I explained some of the strategies uh, right now, but uh, also there are more strategies. So we use very specific handwriting uh, programs. And one of my favorite program that I use, I use a combination of these handwriting without peers program. I use fine motor skill training. I use visual perception worksheets and I use sensory strategies uh, for the formation of letters and spatial relation. When I combine this program, and even I have done this program and training online with children, I have achieved much better results when I have combined the program. A little overview of handwriting without peers is that it is a very good curriculum of handwriting program. How we have a curriculum for our English language, how we have a curriculum for any different subject. That way, this is a curriculum for handwriting and how it starts from the base and takes the child, um, takes the curriculum up at the level of the child. So at the kindergarten level or at the level of the nursery, the child is just taught first how to form letters, not directly with pencil and paper, but by means of some manipulatives. So for example, so I'm going to stop my share and show you a few things. Okay. Is my screen visible? Yes, it is. Okay, so this is say one of the manipulative and I want to teach the child how to write a D. Okay, so for you it may be like this. So there is a sheet that is given and the child has to place a standing line and then the child has to place the semicircle and this becomes a D. So when the child learns to place it properly, one, the child is knowing spatial relation. Then the child is forming concepts of standing line and where the bump starts and where the bump ends. So they start with these kind of manipulatives. Then they go towards slate and chalk. And even there, they use a sensory method where on the chalk first, they write the letter and then the child has to write with a wet sponge. Then they have to dry, uh, dry the area on which they have written and then write with chalk. So it uses a sensory medium. After that, they move on to workbooks that are actually developed according to the age and they use correct spacing according to the um, level of the child. So the child learns from say the width of the double line is, a, is quite a bit, then moving to width 
reducing and then single line so it is a very structured curriculum that the child follows even cursive writing is introduced between two the second and the third standard when the child is actually ready to take that kind of a uh, cursive writing up and not it is not introduced at the level, level of kindergarten so it goes developmentally and therefore it is a very effective program at the same time brain gym activities fine motor skill training and sensory motor skill training is very very important so i'll share some screen or uh, share the screen to share the sensory aspects with you so the, the uh, these are some of the examples of developing fine motor skills and pincer grasp required for writing so here the child is sorting out the numbers the other child is picking up the ball with the tongue and transferring it to a another container your another game which is developing a pincer grasp beading lacing this is lacing this is clay play and this is sand writing so writing letters on the sand also helps to understand the formation of letters and understanding uh feeling the pressure amount of pressure that is required another thing one can use is this is a sand paper one can also use sand paper to teach formation of letters when when you write with your finger on the sand, sand paper there is a certain sound associated a texture associated and the child can actually register more at the level of the brain when it is sensory needed another thing that can be used is foam sheet so this is a foam sheet and the child is writing on the foam sheet child will have to be very much aware of the pressure he is using on the foam sheet because excess pressure will tear the foam sheet very light pressure will not give any mark on the foam sheet so these are some of the strategies one uh, uh, one of the strategies is also to uh, clay play is one of the things but i have found that putti play this is called thera putti which is easily available uh, on amazon and uh, it has different resistances different colors have different resistances they are uh, it is very good to develop fine motor strength in pincer grasp and with different activities the way you play with clay very very important is posture while writing so when you when the posture is not correct if say for example when you see on the screen you see this girl having the forward head posture slouched shoulders the core is not at all activated that time the uh, muscles that need to be activated for handwriting do not get activated well enough and one is not able to write for a longer time or appropriately good posture is when your feet are grounded the feet are not hanging in the air grounding is required for focus so one is your feet need grounding your hip knee have to form an angle of 90 90 the the spine and the neck should be aligned well the table and the chair height has to be appropriate the the table height cannot be at the level of the chest it has to be slightly below also the elbows need to be supported near the table while writing this is an example of a good posture where the core is also activated and proximal strength also is good enough for the child to continue writing now when i talked about the programs and when i talked about handwriting training one needs to consider this that even though when what we are dealing with is we are dealing with special needs children so when we are teaching special needs children they have co they they have symptoms from their own conditions so the strategies um that need to be in place for those conditions have to be combined with the handwriting program okay so autism down syndrome learning disability physical disability visual issues have to be taken into consideration so that's the end of my presentation and i am ready for questions ms swati
Thank you so much, Dr. Nita. That was uh, really a very informative and interesting session. Before we proceed to the Q&A segment, I would like to inform our attendees that if they wish to register for the next webinar from the Ability Series by Dr. Neelam Sodhi on the topic, how to help youth with special needs navigate the puberty journey, they could register on the link being shared in the chat box right now. Also, if they wish to register uh, for the next workshop by Ms. Geeta Gopi entitled Effective Techniques to Teach Arithmetic Skills of Multiplication and Division to Children with Special Needs, they could use the link in the chat box. Also, we are sharing a link to check out the upcoming events from Ability. So if you wish to register for any of the workshops which have been planned in the month of August, please do check out. Okay, moving to the questions, Dr. Nita. Uh, you did talk about uh, different issues children face with the grip. Uh, so the first question that I have, and although you did share some strategies, but the first question that I have is from Minakshi Jha, and Minakshi is asking us if you could uh, reshare some of the strategies to improve the grip of children. Okay, so uh, first and foremost, before, you know, if, if grip is an issue, one needs to uh, check that what is the grip the child is having. So, for example, if the child is, say, four years of age and if he's still on mass grasp like this, he's holding the pencil like this and writing, you would actually want to teach the child how to pick up the pencil and how to get a good grip. So, uh, is my screen visible enough? Yes, it is. Okay, so I will use a smaller pencil. So here I need to teach the child to just first pick up the pencil appropriately. So with my thumb and pointer finger, I pick up the pencil. So this is called pencil pickups. You just ask the child to first pick up the pencil appropriately. Once this is done, you pick up the pencil and then you turn the uh, other end of the pencil inside and put it in the first web space. So you get a correct grasp. This is for training of the correct grip or the grasp. So e, you are picking up the pencil and you're turning over the other border and putting it in the first web space. Many of the children, the pencils do not rest in the first web space, which is actually important for it to rest in the first web space. So they get proper support. Before you start to write, it is a better idea to spend 15 minutes only on doing this exercise, picking up the pencil, getting the correct grip. So once you train the grip, the idea forms on actually how am I going to do that particular task and how the grip will form. If by this method also, you feel that you have worked enough on this method, the child has picked up the pencil, now the child knows how to hold it. If there is any physical issue that is uh, uh, not helping the grip then one could think of grippers but grippers is something that you should use at the end so this is one example of a gripper that we use so here the child holds the, the gripper is put in the pencil and the child holds the gripper and gets a correct grip and writes but then there are so many different kind of grippers so you will have to customize the gripper according to the uh, issue the child is having so initially, just focus on developing the correct grip by the pencil pickups and putting the pencil in the first web space. Right. That was indeed very useful. The next question that we have has been asked by a lot of people, including Vishnu, Asha and multiple others. Uh, they're asking why are children taught to write print letters when they use cursive in their actual real life? And which writing style is better for children in UKG specifically, print or cursive? So uh, uh, developmentally, it is it has to start with print. So why is print taught first? Because it is developmental. It is a developmental stage where the child is first learning to form the standing line, the sleeping line, the slant line. In cursive, you need a lot of formations and joints uh, between each, uh, you know, when you're joining the words. So if I'm joining C, A, T, cat. So C A T cat, right? I have to join the letter C A T cat, but th that kind of uh, uh, 
formation cannot occur because you require a lot of wrist rotations and at younger age those kind of wrist rotations are not there first you start with the base which is the print writing where you understand standing line sleeping line slant line then you actually move towards the uh, cursive letter which is developmentally between second and third standard also you should always start with capital letters first when you are teaching and then move on to the lowercase letters and there is also a sequence of letters that one needs to start with so if i have started with capital letters it once i have learned all the capital letters when i move to the lowercase letters i could choose the letters which are similar in capital so c o s v w if you see the formation is the same only the sizing is different from capital to small so to choose take that and teach first it becomes easier for the child so uh, if therefore print has to be taught first and then a child has to move on to cursive so it is developmentally appropriate i hope that helps totally uh, that was really interesting dr nita and the way you said certain uh, when we go to small cases certain letters which are similar could be taught uh, first and that probably would make it easier the next question that we have is from manila and khalid manila and khalid are asking us if you could share some tips and strategies to improve handwriting do using virtual or online sessions now that most of the sessions are being conducted online how to help the children improve their handwriting when uh, these online sessions are getting conducted yeah so in fact uh, we we have majorly got very good responses in online sessions one is that first first and foremost when we are uh, teaching a handwriting program we do ask uh, the parent to be there along with the child uh, when the session is there also the session is uh, only dedicated towards handwriting so uh, there are many therapists also who uh, who do handwriting along with sensory integration at that point of time that one hour and only 15 minutes dedicated to handwriting but we do 40 minutes of uh, handwriting training so first we start with depending upon the assessment of the child so if a child has come to me say at 10 years of age but at 10 years of age the formation of letters are very big the the letters are not within the space the pressure gradient is too much then i am going to first go back to the basics and teach formation of letters and uh, we have customized worksheets according to the assessment so once we assess the child we customize those worksheets and we send it to the parent and zoom is such an awesome app because there is a whiteboard there right so we demonstrate that letter to the child on the whiteboard the parent first helps the child with it and then the child slowly gets into an independent mode so uh we start with 40 minutes if the attention span of the child is less and if we feel that 40 minutes is something that the child is not being able to sit through we actually divide the session so we would take the child 20 minutes on a monday and 20 minutes on tuesday so we work only at the level of the child so that the child's interest is also there and motivation is there in when the internal motivation is there the results are much better also as i said that if you are dealing with certain conditions keep them in mind so if i am dealing with a child who has issues um, in handwriting but has autism i also use reinforcement as a strategy so for every letter written well the reinforcement is immediately given so the child is motivated to write another letter when uh, when it is given so uh, we customize the program according to the child and we have found great results uh, through that and this is all through online sessions Uh, i can't hear you miss swati okay great uh, so the next one that we have dr neeta is from vinanshia vinanshia is asking us if you could share some inputs about the appropriate age for developing uh, writing skills in children and uh, is there a specific reason why writing ability must develop the most in the early stage so as we went through the uh, presentation we came to know that how writing is so uh, like handwriting stimulates so many parts of the brains at the same time right so uh, it is a whole brain activity a skill worth pursuing when you do it at a earlier age you are actually helping the learning process and the the brain is receptive to a lot of learning during that time the earlier age 
the brain is receptive to a lot of learning because whatever you feed at that time the child is able to take what you don't feed at that time those connections get pruned out so it is like use it or lose it right so if you if you actually do it at that time you will get much more better result versus when you wait and try to do it uh, in at a later age when so many things are learned you will have to unlearn them and then you will have to do it so handwriting first of all it is one of our academic foundation skills on the basis of which all our subjects are there any script is there it is not for example i am not focusing only on english even if it is it has to be hindi the child needs to actually know the letters therefore the child needs to know writing it is an academic foundation and therefore also it has to be taught at an early age right right yeah so uh, teaching it at the early age looks like that is important one of the other common questions that we have re uh, been receiving dr neeta by a lot of participants who are also watching us live and over facebook is how could uh, educators correct the reversals uh, which are commonly uh, observed in children when they try and uh, learn new things or when they write new letters the reversal of the letters itself yeah so one uh, one has to understand that reversals are okay till 7 years of age one is when you are teaching the child d d mainly the reversals are seen word uh, or nine and six you know those letters they, they get con they are confusing to the child so when the child is learning it is still a learning process so you can wait it out and you can help the child accordingly but what helps the best is one is the sensory uh, formation of letters so as we saw in the picture on the sand tray or on the sand paper second if you can create rectangular boxes you you have to uh, make rectangular boxes and you have to give a starting point so for example if i want to teach b the starting point uh, at the on the box it so b starts with a standing line and then you make a c right so this is b i don't know i'm not able to show you very well on the screen can can you see okay, this is b for you right right a d for you and this is b for you uh the first one that you showed would be b and this one would be d right for us all right all right so you show it also with the formation of fingers and i'm talking about a rectangle can i show it on the white screen Sure, sure, sure. Please go ahead. It would not be a touching. I'll try. Okay. I would like to draw a rectangle over here. Please. not possible on the laptop all right so what i will uh, show you is this do you see this can you see this uh, yes okay can. you see a smiley on top okay you see mm -hmm. a now this yes. is starting point so show the child the starting point first you demonstrate the letter so you demonstrate the let letter by making a standing line and then you make a C over, here. curve over. Here. Okay, so that becomes B. Now, right. what happens in D is first you are making a C, and then you are making a standing line. So, first never teach B and D together. Take combination of letters where you are first teaching D. After those four letters are learned, in the next combination take D, and accordingly show the formation. Now, this can be done on a rectangular slate. so first you write the letter b then the child has to uh, can use a sensory medium of taking a wet sponge making a standing line doing the uh, curve and that makes it a b use a dry tissue and again make a b and then the child again writes a b himself on the impression that is created because of the wet and the dry marks this helps the child to le learn through sensory learning and it will help also in the formation of reversals and here when you use a rectangular box you are actually giving boundaries and you are giving a start point so the child is not anywhere writing anywhere but he is actually at one position this also helps 
about where to start the standing line. So in right. B, you are starting the standing line first, and the hump, and then in uh, I'm in B, and in D, you are starting. You are making a C first, and then you are making the standing line. So that way, you can help the reversals and also teaching it separately. But till seven, reversals are okay. Right. So till seven years of age, reversals are completely uh, fine because I think so. Children are like Dr. Nita said are still in the learning phase. The next question that we have is from Tanu. Tanu is asking us how to help children to trace letters with their own hand without the support of anyone, be it parents or teachers. And if uh, do you think tracing the dotted line still is an effective technique? If you could share your inputs about the same. One is the technique that I just described of wet, dry, dry surface is very good for tracing. It's the same thing that the adult has to write the letter first and then the child can use a sensory medium to trace on that and then, then with the chalk write on his own. Uh, right. My input for the dotted lines is something that I'm not very much in for the dotted lines. One, why? Because we are dealing with special needs children. So once the dots go away, again, the learning becomes a problem. So you, if you use only two dots, only two, only the dots that are required, they are enough. So more than dots, the manipulatives that I showed you, that helps in understanding the formation better. And then tracing it from the starting point to where it has to go. So when you actually use surfaces which has boundaries, so I this is a foam sheet, but you get a very small slate also. So when I am actually teaching them to write a letter, when they start a letter, say they are starting from here, going down. Now this is the end. Beyond this, they cannot go only. So they know where to end it. This is where it is going to end. So they, you don't need dots to show them that how you have to go down and where it will end. Because you have already shown them wet, dry, dry. Now you are directly showing them that this is the way you have to go and this is a standing line. And then... You are making a curve or whatever letter you are teaching. But it is a complete formation that you are teaching rather than doing dotted lines or even lines which have those, uh, which are not dotted, but they are, uh, they are actually lines that are created to reach that piece. It takes a lot of time to process how to write that letter and unlearn that processing, uh, unlearning that becomes difficult. So I am not for dotted lines or line sheets. Right. Interesting. Uh, so I'm sure the audience is learning a lot of new things today. The next question that we have is from Claire, who's watching this live via Zoom. Uh, Claire is asking us if preschoolers should write more or less. What is your advice? It has to be appropriate. It doesn't have to be more and it doesn't have to be uh, less. So uh, it depends upon the curriculum also that is and, and the timing that has been uh, set for the children at the level of the preschool and the worksheets at the level of the preschool usually would be match the column going in in uh, you know putting slant lines and putting standing lines and sleeping lines so i'm sure that the child is able to do around four worksheets if they are at the level of e the easier level not writing writing in terms of at the a, at the level of nursery you are going to work more on of sleeping standing and slant lines and patterns when you are right. reaching junior kg again we take only six letters at a time but we do not move on to the other six letters till those six letters are actually perfect yeah totally and uh, it's not that those six letters are taken together through uh, in one week three letters are done in the next week another three letters are done it depends upon curriculum to curriculum, but there is. it should not be more, it should not be less. It, it has to be appropriate. So neither more nor less works. Uh, appropriate is the word to go by. The next one that we have is from David. David is asking us what type of handwriting is most suitable for children with autism or any other specific special needs. If print would be better suited for them or cursive would be better suited for them. Is there a type? 
it depends totally upon the child who is on the spectrum uh children who i have seen on the spectrum some of some of the children cannot write at all and we had to go directly from the basics so we started with print some of the children were already writing in running letters so we stuck to cursive with them right so it is because autism itself is a condition which is at uh, three levels mild moderate severe and also the affection is different for each one so you check at what level the child is in his handwriting part thanks dr neeta since we are running short of time we'll take two last questions for today the next one that i have is from jomal jomal is asking us if uh, while writing anything in a paper is it helpful if the child copies something that is already written on the board or uh, will they write what is there in their mind it depends if the teacher is instructing the child has to write what is there on the board right and, uh, i can you repeat the question once more uh so uh, basically uh, i from my understanding what jomal is asking is if uh, copying from the board makes it easier for the child to write or uh, the child will write what they have learned or what is already in their mind initially the child will learn only or when the teacher writes on the board or the worksheet that they are working upon has that letter printed on it right if the sheet is blank then then it the sheet can be blank only once the child has actually learnt it completely and now the child is being told to write independently but if the child is learning if the child is still learning to identify and form the letter it makes sense to write it on the board as well as having that printed on the worksheet so uh, when our online sessions are there the worksheets that we send is we instructing on the zoom whiteboard but the chi child also has a sheet with a letter written in it so that the child has a representation form on both both the screen as well as on the paper interesting the last question that we have is uh, from bindu bindu is asking us that the 5 year old can write chalk with chalk pieces crayons or sketch pens for that matter but uh, the child does not like to write using a pencil on a four lined book uh, the child writes very big letters so how can bindu help the child write small and using a pencil or a pen if you could guide so one uh, from what she says i can make out the child is seeking a lot of sensory instruments to write so the intent to write is there uh, when you are using the red and the blue line book to write one it creates a lot of uh, difficulties because the child has to understand the spacing correctly now if the child is writing with the chalk crayon or or the other medium that where where is the child writing upon that that is an important question is he given a free blank space a slate that is blank and the child is writing anywhere without any boundaries and then we are giving him a, a very well aligned boundary in the red and blue line book so there is uh, the developmental uh, level sh shifts uh, drastically so you could go first by the child writing in boxes so during the presentation there was one picture where the there were square boxes made and the sample had h k l written on it so similarly if you could make boxes and first teach the child to write in the boxes if you think the child is cooperating well with the chalk then do it with the chalk and the slate first and then once the formations are concrete well enough shift to the square uh, square lined book the books that you get for math and go to 1 inch squares then go to smaller squares then go to double lines with uh, sufficient width then reducing the width to another double line and then to single line that is how the progression should be there it cannot be chalk slate and directly to red and blue line book for the pencil holding you could first try to teach him the pick up of pencil and turning the pencil just work on the grip before actually asking him to write with the pencil interesting piece of information shared by you dr neeta and so many more advices and strategies which i'm pretty sure 
most of the people would benefit from and would practice following the strategies suggested by you. Uh, since we are running short of time, I wish to continue asking you more and more questions, but unfortunately, we'll have to end this session. But do not worry, because uh, we would plan many more interesting events uh, around this on academic skills, where you will get an opportunity to learn about such strategies and techniques much more in detail. Uh, before I end the session, I would like to remind our attendees that if they wish to register for the upcoming event on puberty, please do find the link on the chat box. And if you wish to register for the next workshop, which is on academic skills, of arithmetic skills for uh, multiplication and division, please do register and find the link in the chat box. Do not forget to share your feedback about today's event so that we could improve the experience further from you and learn from your observations. Thank you so much once again, Dr. Nita, for such an informative and great session. How did you feel about today's session? Thank you so much for the opportunity. It was so awesome. I saw 700 plus participants. So definitely handwriting is a skill worth pursuing. Uh, it shows me the interest that is there uh, in the subject of handwriting and uh, definitely the connection that it makes. I, I'm, I'm so glad I could uh, be a part of that awareness. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Dr. Nita, for your precious time. That brings us to the end of today's session. See you on the next uh, webinar or workshop from Ability. Do not forget to register. Thank you so much. Thank you.